Thank you so much, Dr. Davis, for agreeing to this uh, interview uh, to talk about telemedicine. And I guess uh, what's important for us now is to really understand what it is and how that works for us, especially in these difficult times. Great, yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me to this call. I'm Dr. Davis. I'm the managing director of a company called the Medical Concierge Group that runs the Rocket Health Service. Rocket Health is a telemedicine service that allows patients anywhere where they may be to be able to consult a doctor through a 24 7 medical call center staffed with licensed doctors, Ugandan doctors, and they're able to provide any kind of medical advice uh, or prescriptions or recommend lab tests that should be done. So, what that immediately does is makes it uh, uh, accessible to anyone across the country uh, to access a doctor uh, where they may not be able to physically see one. Uh, Uganda has a patient doctor ratio of 1 to 25,000, so it's uh, quite pertinent that we use technology to increase access. When you say um, across the country, do you also have services across the country? Uh, yes, we do have our teleconsultation service across the country. So we do uh, respond to calls from patients that come as far as the Lamu region or from uh, southwestern Uganda or from uh, even the Karamoja region for some of our programs. Uh, and then what we do if we need a prescription, uh, normally we if you are within Kampala, we can actually deliver that prescription to you out of our licensed pharmacy. If you need a lab test, we'll actually pick up your lab sample and run that test within our labs and have the doctors communicate the results back to you. Uh, if you're in other parts of the country where we physically cannot be able to do that, uh, we have a referral database for your nearest pharmacy, nearest lab, nearest public health facility where you should be able to get a service. All right. What has it been like um, now and before COVID-19 in terms of the number of people utilizing this? Yeah, so uh, we've been running this service for the last seven years. And, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic period has been uh, a season where we've seen the highest spike in the number of people using our services. We've seen growth rates uh, in triple digits of percentages over the last few days alone. And what that really means is that people are starting to warm up to the idea that they can be able to access their care remotely, especially now where they can't use a public or private means to be able to get to a physical facility where they used to get uh, their healthcare service. Uh, we have gotten into partnerships uh, with insurance companies and we've been able right now to service also uh, members of insurance companies like QAPO, Mutual, ICEA and Prudential. And I think a lot of traction is coming from that community in addition to the existing traction that we had from across the country through some of our development partners uh, like USAID or UNPDF and so on. All right. Is this something that everybody and anybody can use? And in that sense, what must they have to be able to access your services? Yeah, so you just need to have a very simple, basic mobile phone. Uh, all you have to do is to just send an SMS with the word CARE, C-A-R-E, to uh, short code 8080. So the moment you just send that SMS, it's a free SMS. You just have to follow the prompts. And when you have a complete transaction, the doctor will be able to call and have, have an insurance membership with any of those that I mentioned. What would happen is that your insurance company will have communicated to you a dedicated toll-free phone line that you can be able to call in and reach a doctor. If you have a program with us, a development program, they've also done the same. They've shared dedicated toll-free phone numbers uh, that they can be able to use. And uh, anybody else can also come to us and be able to uh, get a year-long subscription to get unlimited consultations throughout the year. It's also very simple to do. You just send an SMS with the word join uh, to 8080 and sign up. I think for a lot of us, the challenge is that we are used to the physical contact. We want somebody to physically see us, you know, that physical touch and closeness. And this sort of takes away from it, from what I understand so by this. Away from it. What it does is that it tries to make it a more structured approach. To so triage is a very to the, uh, a special medical practice where you want to first get basic information to understand if this is something that requires different levels of immediacy or attention. Uh, so what we basically do first is triage your condition, make sure we take proper history around your condition. And if it's something that we can resolve over the phone, we'll go ahead and do that. If it's something that requires over-the-counter medication, we'll require that you go ahead and get that. If it's something where you cannot be able to get a definitive diagnosis and it would require some confirmatory lab tests, we'll make sure we recommend those lab tests to get done and then get uh, solid results about 
uh, what your next course of care should be. There are some individuals that call in and the recommendation is that they definitely still have to go into a physical facility to be assessed. So it's a great fast point of contact. Uh, and then, you know, the best course of action can be recommended thereafter. In some instances, people actually need emergency and ambulatory care, and we make sure that they get those services. So it's a great place to start when you're seeking healthcare that is very convenient, very accessible, you use your mobile phone device, regardless of which uh, type of device that you have. Is there a danger of prescribing wrong medication? And that is always a danger in the entire medical uh, practice. Uh, every medical professional always needs to uh, be very careful, very ethical with how uh, we handle uh, arriving at a diagnosis, how we handle prescriptions. So um, the Ministry of Health has the, uh, a standard of clinical guidelines for every single condition. So you have to make sure that you have all the quality assurance protocols, whether it's telemedicine or whether it's a physical practice, to ensure that you're making uh, all that's necessary to align with those uh, standards of clinical practice. So everybody has to adhere to those. Um, and then what we do internally is that every interaction gets recorded, gets reviewed by a quality assurance team of medical professionals and the quality assurance team making sure that we uh, are empathetic and communicate effectively to our, our patients. So we have taken every measure possible uh, to make sure that we align on a quality perspective and make sure you get an accurate diagnosis, you get uh, the right prescription, and uh, we actually also follow you up to ensure that you do achieve your desired health. All right, do any of your teams, and I, I think I had this somewhere, do any of your teams do um, visits, site visits, to, so you go to somebody's home. Um, I know you do deliveries, like you mentioned, especially within Kampala, but are there people who go maybe to take a temperature or something like that? Yeah, so when it's normally required, uh, so for instance, at the time that we're doing a pharmacy delivery, we may come and take your temperature, or if we're doing a lab test, we may use that as an opportunity to pick other different vitals uh, from you. Uh, there are other things that we can do at home, especially vaccinations right now, because people have a huge limitation around their movement. If your daughter, your son, your child is scheduled for a vaccination, uh, you'll want to make sure that they get it and they don't miss it. Uh, because vaccinations do save lives and you want to make sure you get them all and you get them in a timely way. And we're currently offering a range of about 17 vaccines through our service. And it's very simple to access. If you just call the toll-free line 0800 100 700, you can choose whether you want to talk to uh, uh, the vaccination team at the clinic or whether you want to talk to the pharmacy team or whether you want to talk to the lab team. And you just have to make your selection through the IVR and be connected to the appropriate service. And it's all toll free at that point. Well, it's all toll free at that, point, at that point, but I guess with the, all the services you give, there's a price for that. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what your prices look like. It seems like it must be something that's a bit costly from the normal doctor visit if you have to come to us. So that is very interesting. So uh, you'll actually find that our, some of our services are actually free. Uh, some services are free because they are in partnership with the Ministry of there have been a huge amount of making uh, everybody that uh, needs to get vaccines gets uh, a basic set of vaccines for free. So we currently do provide those for free and the only service charge will bill you is really just to get somebody to you to pick up, uh, sorry, to deliver that vaccination to you at home. Uh, there are other services that we do provide, pharmacy services, lab services. And what we have been able to do is to reduce the overhead in our operations. For instance, we do not need to have multiple pharmacy locations, multiple inventory in different locations. We don't need to have multiple labs and multiple equipment and multiple staff. We've just made an investment around the logistics and distribution of the same services. So that allows us to be very competitive. How we price our medicines, our lab tests, you can get the free vaccines. Uh, you can also get some of the private vaccines from us. So uh, if you look at, at the prices, you'll find them very uh, decent and very accommodative for a lot of people within the market. All right. Um, so if your teams are coming around, especially in this period where we have to take extra precaution about getting in contact with people, are they taking the extra precaution? Definitely. We're already taking very strict measures uh, from a safety standpoint. And now uh, it's even more imperative uh, that we adhere to each of those standards. So you'll notice that our teams will ensure that you're sanitized, you visibly see that they are sanitized, any equipment uh, that, you're, uh, that they're using is brand new, it's clean. Every 
piece of their equipment, once comes brought back to the lab or to the pharmacy, there are all kinds of sanitization processes around that. They'll come wearing protective equipment, so they'll have the N95 masks, they'll be wearing gloves, even our delivery staff uh, is done by medical professionals, so they are aware of each and every uh, standard that must be adhered to throughout the process to make sure that we keep our staff safe, keep our staff safe and we can be able to uh, combat the risk. Are there any limits to what you can treat online? Definitely, there have to be limits to what we can treat online. And we take our doctors through a very strict uh, training process to make sure that they can differentiate those conditions that we can be able to handle remotely and identify those conditions that require a physical assessment or a specialist review uh, to go along with that. And this is, this is a system that we have owned over the last seven, eight years that we have uh, been in practice. So we, may, we have a very nice quality assurance uh, metric that we use to uh, guarantee that we make that judgment call on what we can do remotely. But 70% of the kind of conditions that people go into the outpatient facility for can also be treated remotely. So these could be uh, acute upper respiratory tract infections, so cough, flu. Uh, you also have some conditions uh, like urinary tract infections that are also quite common. Uh, you also have some dermatological conditions that can also be treated remotely. In some instances, somebody will take a photo of the affected area, send that through to us, and we can be able to make a judgment on whether this is a ringworm infection and the treatment standards for that are very clear. So we've seen that about 60 to 70% of the conditions that we get through our call center can actually be handled remotely. About 20 or 25% of those will be required for a physical review and uh, less than 5% normally are emergency conditions where our recommendation would be going to the hospital right now or get an ambulatory service. All right. Do you, for example, have teams that are equipped to handle um, issues to do with mental health? Yes. So, so mental health has been a very top priority for us. It's been a, a concern that, you know, very many people at the Medical Concierge Group and Rocket Health have had personal experience with their friends and family. Uh, it's become a, a problem that's very synonymous with the younger generation right now. So we are providing counseling services uh, at Rocket Health. Uh, we also do make sure that we enlist a psychiatrist on our service that we can refer our patients to. We can also support their medicine deliveries for those that are on long-term uh, medications so that they get their refills on time, people adhere to their medication so that they keep on that uh, progress uh, chart, uh, doing very well on their medication. So it, it's really a combination of uh, counseling therapy and also adherence to people. All right. Is this the future? And this is my final question. Is this the future of medicine or uh, as you see it of how we are going to be interacting? I think this has this pandemic and this situation we're in has just set an example, set the tone for, you know, we don't know what's coming, but it's set a tone. And I think we must listen to it. Does this look yeah. like the future? Yes. So I think the future definitely has it. This is something to talk about in futuristic sense. Uh, but this is uh, a real phase that we're in that is going to make uh, services like these imperative. I think if there's anything that the COVID-19 pandemic has really shown is that anything that exists in the physical world is going to have to be replicated in the virtual world. So that eventually in a crisis like this, if it, uh, as we go through it and if it ever happens again, everything that we can routinely access physically, we should be able to access virtually. And I think healthcare should be number one on that list. Nobody should ever feel that they're in a point where they cannot access it or it's not affordable or it's not the quality that they need. Uh, it's not the quality that it should be when they need it. So I think uh, this is definitely going to be the beginning of virtual care or telemedicine as we know it. All right. Are you working? I, I know it was, I said it was my final question, but just something came to me. Are you working with the Ministry of Health in the event that somebody calls in and they are giving you the symptoms that are uh, synonymous with uh, COVID-19? Yes, definitely. So everybody that is interacting with us right now is going through a, a risk assessment and we are identifying things whether, uh, you know, they haven't had a history of uh, cough or sore throat. Uh, whether they've had any uh, difficulty in breathing, whether they've had any contact with a relative, a friend, or a patient that has suffered from similar symptoms. 
And we're making sure that any cases that we identify as high risk are definitely passed on to our contact persons and surveillance teams at the Ministry of Health. So we are part of this integrated approach with the ministry and we are having several discussions with other partners on how we can be most, more supportive along those lines. Whether it's getting village health teams or lower cadre health workers to use our service as a way of uh, navigating the whole COVID-19 response, uh, we are definitely open for business and supporting the Ministry of Health whichever way we can. All right, uh, Dr. Davis, so every medical person I'm speaking to before I end the call, I'm asking them to make a passionate plea to the people of Uganda who are watching just to talk to them about how serious this is and the precautions they should take and how they should take um, all the messages and the, the concerns of the Ministry of Health and the government seriously. So I will ask you to make the same plea. Great. So Coronavirus disease, or commonly known as COVID-19, is a highly infectious disease, which means that it can easily be spread from person to person uh, if you're in close proximity and somebody's coughing or somebody's sneezing. The one sure fire way to prevent COVID-19 is to always wash your hands at every opportunity that you get or you're in contact with somebody or in contact with surfaces. Make sure you sanitize with approved alcohol-based sanitizers and most importantly, stay at home. Reduce all your movements to zero if you must. Uh, have to go out somewhere, please make sure it's for absolutely medical reasons and nothing else, or just for the reasons to uh, make sure your household is fed. Other than that, stay at home, stay safe, let's fight COVID-19. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Davis. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Welcome, thank you for hosting. All right. Bye-bye.